I'm joined by two people who've watched President Obama's every move for well over the last 100 days, Kelly Goff, political analyst and blogger, and the Washington Post White House reporter, Scott Wilson. So, Kelly Goff, since you're here, let's start with you. How's he doing? Well, according to the latest poll numbers, pretty well. I mean, I, I don't think he could have asked for a better 100 days anniversary gift than these latest numbers from both the Associated Press and Pew, which really have him sitting pretty, quite frankly. Scott, Scott Wilson, do you uh, agree with that? And uh, do you think the polls are reflecting what's really happening? Yeah, I do. I mean, he's he, regardless of how he's doing, he's certainly doing a lot. And I think that, it, that in large part, that's sending a message to the country that he's serious about addressing some of these, these big problems. He's taking on a lot at the same time. And I think the polls uh, reflect that, that they feel like the country is, more and more Americans are feeling like the country is heading in the right direction. I think three times more uh, than, uh, than, than last month, according to some recent AP polls. Yeah, his actual poll number is somewhere in the vicinity of George Bush's at this time, but it's really that right track, wrong track number that makes the big difference. Well, well for the first time in five years, there are more Americans saying that the country's headed in the right direction than in the wrong direction. But I also think that one of the most significant numbers that came out of that Pew poll that was released yesterday is the finding that his approval for foreign policy is actually even higher than his approval for domestic issues, which I, I don't think anyone really saw coming. Why do you think that is? I think that it speaks to how well those uh, trips abroad went. I mean, I, I think that it, the, the irony is that, you know, there was this whole potential for controversy with him shaking Chavez's hand and, 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 and definitely conservatives were trying to make some hay of that but not gaining any, any traction. In fact, there was even another poll released this week about Cuban Americans, two thirds approving of his, of his uh, shift but, in but policy But doesn't there. that perhaps show some of the weakness in these numbers? Because yes, he's getting these good numbers and lots of plaudits for his overseas trips. And Scott, let me go back to you. Mm -hmm. But he didn't really accomplish that much. I mean, remember, he didn't get agreement on stimulus spending. He didn't get really quantifiable gains on these uh, foreign trips. What he got was great photo ops and great mm -hmm. image. Am I uh, say, uh, going too far with that? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think it's as simple as Americans like to see their president uh, celebrated overseas. Um, Ronald Reagan had this effect. Um, and, uh, and so it, to some degree, I think that the polls don't capture uh, just the simple sentiment that, that Americans like their president to be liked. What's that saying that they say perception is reality in politics? Yeah, right. And you know the perception they had a poll showing 67% of Americans believe that the, our leader is now respected in the world. Only 30% felt that way two years ago about George W. Bush. It's significant. Let me ask you both to uh, grade, if we could. Uh, put your teacher hats on for a second here. Uh, let's go to the economy first, since clearly that is the big issue. Can you give him an overall grade on the economy? And I know, in a sense, it's got to be incomplete, but aside from from that, what would you give him? You did take my first answer, incomplete. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and give him a B plus, only because uh, again, two thirds of Americans are still siding with him and have greater confidence in him than I think any of us expected at this juncture. Uh, what about you, Scott? Yeah, I think that's about right. I mean, I, I think that the, the accomplishing the, the stimulus bill, you know, the largest domestic spending you know act in history, less than a month into his administration, gave people a lot of confidence. It's, it is putting money into the system, um, but yeah, it remains to be seen just how much effect this is going to have. Yeah, and in fact, uh, I mean, pretty much everything he's done is a work in progress right now. I know people are giving him good grades and the polls are up, but playing devil's advocate uh, for a moment, which of course is my job, but we don't know if the stimulus is going to wor work. We don't know if the bank uh, workout plan is going to work or the consumer lending plan or any of the other plans. So how can we give him these good grades? I mean, people feel good. They feel like he's saying the right things, but we really don't know. This could, in the end, not have much effect on the economy and put a gigantic debt on future generations, couldn't it? Well, Chip, I'm sure what I'm about to say is going to sound a little ironic coming from me since right in this very moment I'm playing talking head, but I think it's really important for those of us who are sort of in the Washington Beltway bubble to distinguish between the perceptions of people who aren't talking about this every day, writing about this every day, but who are living these things. I think for a lot of Americans, the perception of having a president that makes them feel optimistic, the Ronald Reagan mm -hmm. model, is important. So we can't discount that in terms of factoring that into the grade. Yes, Scott? Yeah, no, I agree with that, and and I and I do think that there, you know, on on the wonky side of things, you know, how much, uh, how much has the money that they've pumped in, you know, stopped a, a deepening slide, right. and and when you hear, you know, when there is a flurry of activity, the upside is people do feel that things are being done, and um, so much of this is perception, whether it's on the stock market or just in someone's, uh, you know, someone's wallet. I am going to spend a little money. I will hire someone. I do feel like things are getting better. So, you know, I do think whether the policy actually translates, it, it, there is a perception that things are going well. But I also will say that the more things you do, and I've heard this from some administrators, 
administration officials. They love the fact they're doing a lot at the same time. Bill Clinton was sort of famous for trying one big thing at a time. That's all he thought the system could really take. Um, there's also greater risk of a lot of these things colliding in some of these committees um, or, or overseas. You have a lot of balls in the air. Um, you know, will, will the energy policy actually fit with with, uh, with the tax policy at the end, um, will he be able to line up those kinds of things in Congress? And when you have a lot going on, that becomes trickier. Okay, I have time for one really quick question, and it's something we were discussing before, that you're getting inundated by questions from people asking if he's going to make tangible differences in the lives of African Americans. This is a, this is a man who didn't run as an African American president. Right. Well, it's really interesting. Like I said, when I've been doing panel discussions, I did one at Harvard Business School for the Black Students Association, and <clears throat> I'm doing another town hall tonight at New York Presbyterian Church. But one of the questions that does keep coming up is sort of when are we going to see some tangible results on some of the harrowing statistics in the black community, whether it's the AIDS rate, whether it's the prison Are people system. disappointed, frustrated? I think that, you know, I think people have to give it time and have to be a little bit more realistic. I think that, you know, keep in mind a lot of the voters who voted for Obama were first time voters. I think for some of them, they're not really used to the realities of how Washington works. So I think that, that you know, he, he needs that for some of those people, time is, is sort of of the essence for oh. them. Okay, well, thank you. Kelly Goff, thank you very much. Thank you. And Scott Wilson, thank you very much. Thank you.